intend to do what we tend to tend to do when we're under pressure and when bad things suddenly happen to us is we either respond the wrong way or we rationalize and try to ignore the situation because we really don't want to confront anybody about our situation or we want to or we usually want someone else to respond to the situation for us or we don't respond at all. Am I in the right church? On last Sunday, we were told that we saw how Jesus came out of the desert and went straight into church. And it was right after having endured, having to endure 40 days and 40 nights of being attacked by the enemy. And Apostle told us how Jesus not only showed us in this text that he gave us on last week how to respond, how he, in other words, responded to the enemy's attack, but Jesus showed us how we ought to respond when the enemy attacks us. And we shouted on that Sunday morning because we were told that our answer had already been provided. And I am in church this morning. And some of us came out of then our mental wilderness we were in and we showed up to walk in our spiritual destinies on the week and we began to walk in the posture of power only to be knocked back down during the week because of some unforeseen event that has literally taken someone's breath away. I came to talk to some real folk this morning. Whatever you've gone through, I don't know who I'm preaching to, something hits your life that has literally taken your breath away. Have you noticed how easy a good day can become a bad day? You see, in my life, I have found out that life can often shift in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and change. One minute you can be on the mountaintop, and in a nanosecond, be right dead smack in the back. One minute you can be on the mountaintop giving God glory and praise, and the next minute you're sitting in the corner somewhere crying your eyes out. I've been there. You know why? Because valleys come suddenly. Valleys are unpredictable. Man. It could be a phone call that you had last week. It could be a letter, a routine doctor, doctor's checkup. How many know that valleys just happen? And now we're dealing with thoughts that are infiltrating and plaguing our minds. And the enemy has raped somebody in this world. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's raped somebody in this world. It's quiet in this place. He's raped you of your peace. Raped you of your anointing. Raped you of your power. Raped you of your identity. But this morning, how many know that the devil is alive? Somebody walked in here this morning frustrated and irritated and vexed in your emotional state, and vexed in your soul. You might be sitting there looking all cute and pious if you want to, but deep down in your spirit, you're really tired. You're giving up on your hopes, you're giving up on your dreams, your, your mental state is one in a month, but you're trying to hear something that'll pull you from that mental struggle that you're in, that wilderness. You're sitting there feeling victimized. And how many of you see the enemy would attack us? with sudden and unexpected things to distract us from our intended purpose. And it's in those times, brothers and sisters, that we got to remember that it might have caught us by surprise, but it did not catch God by surprise. And I'm excited when I think about it because being that the enemy attacked me in the first place, it tells me that he had to get God's permission first. And so if God allowed that thing to happen to me, how many know that there's a blessing on the end of it? We can't help victims, brothers and sisters, if we see ourselves as victims. Tell somebody, God didn't call you to be a victim. But God called you to be a victor. How many victims do I have in the house? That's a good place to give God some praise. Thank God for your life when God has brought you back. You could be still stuck in your victimized state, but you're sitting here full of power and anointing in the midst of whatever it is you're going through. And God said this morning that it's time to grow up in power. You see, you see, this is where David was in this text this morning. You know, we're used to, I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're used to dealing with situations, and as I said, we back up away from things. We rationalize, we pass the block, we call our prayer partners, we talk about the situation, and then we talk about the situation some more, and then we talk about the situation some more, and God says, I'm looking for you to respond to the situation. One minute we're talking about we're anointed this we've got the power on the inside, and the next minute we're looking for somebody that'll pray us through our situation. 
But God said this morning that it's time to be, like, detox our thought patterns. We're so used to being under pressure and growing up under pressure, and it's because the enemy wants us buffeted under the weight of negative emotions. He wants us to feel like we've been victimized, and then he'll bring those unexpected things that I said a minute ago to distract us from our intended purpose. And it's in these times we got to understand that I am more than a comfort. They are all these things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And God said that we've got to grow up in power on today. We've got to come out of this mental struggle that we are in. You see, this is where David was in our text this morning. The Bible says that David was caught between a rock and a hard place. He had to leave not only his house and his home because Saul was out to kill him. He because he had the favor of God on his life. I feel like pushing me now. The Bible says that David was in a place that he did not go to be. The Bible says that they said David has slain his, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his ten thousands. And how many know that Saul tried to kill him because he was jealous of the favor that was on David's life. And so now David has to get out from the place that he has served all his life. And now he's trying to make an allegiance with King Achish. And the Bible says that he went down to a place called Gath. But here's the problem. The problem was that when he went to Gath, I don't think that he went there because he wanted to align himself with the enemy. But the Bible says that he went there because he was trying to run from the people that he had served. And so what I'm trying to ask you this morning is, what do you do when the people that you thought had your back turn their back on you? What do you do when you can't go to the church to get the help and the answer that you need? Now you in between the rock and the hard place. Uh, he's got the enemy on this side. Uh, so now he aligns himself with the wrong people. Uh, and so now he says, the king of kings, I just need to go somewhere. Uh, and the Bible says that all of a sudden now, uh, the Amalekites, uh, they raged war against the people of God. Uh, now all of a sudden, David finds himself in a quadrant. Uh, he goes to Ziklag. Uh, and now all of a sudden, he walks up in there. Uh, and he sees that the enemy had rushed in like a flood. Uh, the Bible says that the enemy came in, they took up everything. Uh, they took up all the money. Uh, they took up all the gold. Uh, they took up all the silver. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they took their wives and their family and their children. Uh, and Pastor Ross, when I read this text, uh, y'all don't feel like preaching this morning. Uh, but I found out when I read this text, uh, I found out uh, that the enemy is not just after me, uh, but the enemy is after my family. Uh, the enemy is after my wife. Uh, 
And so what David is saying is, I can't turn this way. I can't turn this way. So what he did, they used it in the Old Testament. He would call the priest. He would tell the priest to get in touch with God. And David said, no, I need to be by myself. I got to get in touch with God for myself. And so he got in touch with God. And the Bible says in our text, God, what do you want me to do? The Bible says that David says, should I go after this truth? He didn't even know if the people had killed his wife. He didn't know if his children was dead. He didn't know if he did anything like that. He didn't even know that he was by himself. I talked about the class on Wednesday. I talked about relationship and its cost. There's going to come a time, as I said on Wednesday night, that the relationship is going to cost you something personal. He lost his wife. He lost his children. And he lost everything. He did everything that he had to live in. He was burnt up. And so now he asked God, God, what do you want me to do? And God said, I want you to pursue something. Go after what the enemy took from you. And the Bible says, without fail, God said, you're going to get it all back. I don't know what you went through on this week. I to ask you this morning, what did the enemy take from you? You shouted on that Sunday. Thank you. 
know what your it is. But God said, go get it. Because it's yours for the taking. You can't it belongs to you. But it's waiting on you. You is waiting on you. You are waiting on you. Boy, I hope you understand the problem with what I just said. Bible says that this world is waiting on the manifestation the creation is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God the world knows who we are the enemy knows who we are but do we know who we are Turkey never tell them that you're more than a conqueror you are a child of God and you have everything you need Simple message, but yet complex. Because I don't know the easiest thing for us to do is quit. And my wife and I are on a plane coming back to the States. And God began to speak to me, and I began to sit right there and write down some things that He, he gave me. And one of the things He gave me here was we have such a mindset of quitting. Somebody say quit ability. It's easy for us to throw the top of the things. But how many know this is what he told me on the plate, Pastor Rob? He said, that's why we never accomplish what we set out to accomplish. That they heard me. How many of you have started something and you still haven't finished it? But I was okay. Including me. So I said on Wednesday night. How many buildings and construction sites have we seen and they look so good and we like, I can't wait to see the end of this project. Sometimes years later we drive down the same street and say, I'm the same. I feel like I'm cheating. I won't even see the end of this thing. I mean, no, they're not in the book. That's what Jesus said when he came to the fig tree and it was not producing fruit and he cursed it because it should have been producing fruit. And so my question to you today is what are you producing and what are you not producing? And more importantly, why? Why are we still sitting on our feet dragging our feet? Why? We gotta consider the end. Somebody here. That's your personal room. 